So let's look at some examples and I try to use the IRAC method here to help you get used to using it. If you haven't come across it before, IRAC stands for Issue, Rule, Application and Conclusion. And it's a really good technique to use when answering a problem style question. So here's our first example. Monica grants a right of way over her back garden to Joey for life by deed. The first issue is what is it? Well, it's a right of way, which is an easement. And the first main issue we need to look at is whether an easement is capable of being legal. So to find the relevant rule, we need to decide whether it's an estate or an interest. And it's an interest because it's giving Joey the right over somebody else's land. So it's giving him a right over Monica's land. That means that we need to look in section 1, subsection 2. Here's the rule which states that easements, which are equivalent to a fee simple absolute in possession, or a term of years absolute, are capable of being legal. So if we apply that rule, well this one is not equivalent to a fee simple. In other words, it doesn't last forever. It only lasts for Joey's lifetime. And it's not for a term of years absolute. So it's not for a fixed period. We don't know how long Joey is going to live. So our conclusion is going to be that it's not within section 12A. So it's not capable of being legal because section 1.3 says that everything else is equitable. So we would conclude this easement is equitable. This time we're going down the right hand side because what we've seen is this right isn't capable of being legal. Here's another example. Ross grants a right of way over his back garden to Rachel for 20 years by deed. And again, identify what type of right you've got. A right of way is an easement. So the first issue we need to look at is whether an easement is capable of being legal. In order to find the relevant rule, we need to decide whether it's an estate or an interest. Well, it's an interest. So the rule is that only interests listed in section 1, subsection 2 are capable of being legal. And the rule is that certain easements are capable of being legal and they are easements which are equivalent to a fee simple absolute in possession or a term of years absolute. Is this starting to sound familiar? So let's apply that rule to the facts. Well, this time, this easement is equivalent to a term of years absolute because it's for 20 years. So our conclusion is going to be that it does fall within section 1, subsection 2. So an easement of this type is capable of being legal. So now we need to move on to the second key issue, which is whether this particular easement is legal. And to work that out, we have to see whether any requirements for its creation have been complied with. As we've seen, the rule in section 52 of the Law of Property Act 1925 says that to create a legal interest in land, a deed is needed. And I would just quickly check whether any of the exceptions apply at this stage, but they don't. So apply the rule. Well, the facts tell us that this easement was created by deed. So our conclusion is that this particular easement is legal. So we're back to the left hand side in green. It was capable of being legal and the requirements for its creation had been complied with. OK, here's another one. This one is Phoebe and Chandler execute a deed under which Chandler promises not to use his land for business purposes. First of all, as always, identify the nature of the right. Well, this is a, a right known as a restrictive covenant. And to find the relevant rule, we need to ask ourselves, is it an estate or an interest? Well, it's an interest. The rule states that only interests listed in section 1-2 are capable of being legal. 
let's apply the rule. And if we look down section one, subsection two, they're not there. So they're not listed in section one, subsection two. So our conclusion is that this particular type of property right is not capable of being legal. So it can never be legal because the rule in section one, subsection three states that everything else is equitable. So our conclusion is that it's equitable. So back to the flow chart and this time we're looking at the right hand side in red because this right is not capable of being legal. And here's an important point. Did you notice that that restrictive covenant was created by deed? So just because an interest is created by a deed doesn't mean that it's legal. So that illustrates why it's so important to deal with the first issue before you look at the method of creation. And this is a potential trap for an unwary student. So here's a more complex example, which is not for the faint hearted if you're new to studying land law. But if you're at the stage where you are revising or consolidating your understanding, then it's something to get your teeth into with a detailed step by step answer. So we can see that Leonard agreed to grant a six year lease of a shop to Sheldon. The document that they both signed was described as a deed but they didn't have their signatures witnessed. And the question we're asked is whether this document creates a legal or an equitable lease. Now here the examiner has told us that it's a lease, so there's no need to uh, identify it. The, the, the examiner's already done that for us. But we do need to decide whether it's an estate or an interest. And this time it's an estate. And the first key issue we need to look at is whether a lease is capable of being legal. So we're going to be looking in section 1.1, which deals with estates. And we see that section 1.1 states that leases, or as it's referred to in the statute, a term of years absolute, are capable of being legal. So we're going to apply that rule and we're going to conclude that a lease is capable of being legal. So now we're moving on to the second main issue, which is whether this particular lease is legal. So we need to look at whether the formalities to create a legal lease have been complied with and the relevant rule is in section 52. So we need a deed unless it falls within the exceptions for short leases. Well, if we apply that rule, it's more than three years, so the exception doesn't apply. And so we can conclude that we do need a deed. So now we need to decide whether the signed document is a valid deed. So we'd set out the rules for a valid deed, which are in section one of the Law of Property Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1989. You'd explain the requirements for a valid deed. And when you come to apply it, you would say, well, it's signed, it is described on its face as a deed and it's been delivered, but it hasn't been witnessed. So you conclude that the document is not a valid deed. So that would then allow you to conclude that it's not a legal lease. So although leases are capable of being legal, this particular one is not a legal lease. Then we need to move on to see whether this signed document that we have can create an equitable lease. The rule is that an informal grant of rights in land can be treated as a contract to create the right. We've seen that in the case of Parker and Taswell. So then we have to check to see whether the document satisfies the requirements for a valid contract, which are in section two of the 1989 Act which says that it must be in writing and signed by both parties. If we apply that rule, well, the document is in writing and they both signed it. So we can conclude that it is a valid contract. Therefore, we can arrive at the final conclusion that Sheldon has an equitable lease for six years. So that's all that I want to say about whether 
a right is legal or equitable. Now, just looking forwards at this stage, um, what you, if you're new to studying land law, what you will probably move on to look at next is whether third party rights are binding on a new owner of the land. And there are two different systems for dealing with this issue, depending on whether title to the land is unregistered or registered. And that's something that I'm going to be looking at in later videos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful and that you've picked up some tips along the way. And remember that if you're new to land law, you might find it helpful to watch the video again when you've completed your studies and you're revising for an end of year assessment. Please consider subscribing to my channel or like or share because it really does make a difference and I will be adding more content soon. Please feel free to add comments below because I find them really useful. Thanks again for watching. Good luck with your studies.